So I'm Grace. Um, I was born in Korea in the early 90s um, from a Christian family. Um, my first memory involving God was when I was around two or three years old. Um, I remember I, I found a little sweet in my pocket and I really wanted to share it with God. So I reached my arms high up into the sky and I said, 하나님 사탕 먹을래요? Which means, God, do you want to have this sweet? Um, yeah, so that the, the existence of God was just a normal thing for me from a really young age. Um, so when, when I was born, my dad was a youth pastor. Um, he was also a classical singer, classically trained singer. And my mom was a piano teacher and a singing teacher for primary school kids, as well as a Sunday school teacher. Um, so God and music was, was very much, um, yeah, always present in our family. And yeah, God, God was always at the center of our family. Um, a family, I don't know if I should say tradition, but something that our family has done for a very long time is um, praying and sharing the word together. Um, even today, back at home in New Zealand, when it hits 9.30 p.m. Um, in every weekday, everyone gathers in our parents' room and we pray and do a devotionals together. Um, yeah, and through through this, I was able to experience a, a, like many many prayers answered. Um, yeah, from a from a young age, um, I just witnessed it, and it was just a good thing to do every day because it um, was a, you could you could sort of see how God um, worked every day. Um, a little bit of history. Uh, so our family moved to New Zealand from Korea along with a whole wave of other Korean immigrants in 1995. Um, that was when I was four years old. My sister was two months old at the time and um, my younger sister was born two years after in New Zealand. Um, now along with um, other immigrant, immigrant children, I had the, um, an unusual opportunity to choose my own name because um, I didn't have an English name. Um, I was given some options by my parents and I remember them showing me um, in the dictionary what grace meant. And um, I guess I liked the meaning of it, so I chose grace as my name. Um, and yeah, as I was preparing for this testimony, I felt like, I, I, I felt I wanted um, to sum up the whole testimony with um, Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 9. Um, it's, uh, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and it is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so no one can boast. Um, I think as a, uh, as a four-year-old, choosing the name Grace was the best decision I've made because I live by God's grace and his favor every day. Um, I would say overall, I had a pretty good childhood, um, apart from my early years when I moved to New Zealand, where I had to adjust to new language and culture and a very brief teenage angst period when I was 10. <laughs> but things were, things were pretty good. Um, I had loving parents and I had a good relationship with them. And I also had a good good relationship with my sisters. And uh, also because I did music, um, I was always um, surrounded with a broad range of friends um, throughout my intermediate and high school years. I just had a lot of favor. I, I had lots of good friends and um, teachers liked me. It was a bit of a goody good as well, but anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, so God showed his grace, e grace even in the smallest desires of my heart. Uh, for example, in high school, I really wanted to be part of the school orchestra, but I didn't play an orchestral instrument because um, I was a singer. And there's a, there's a joke about sopranos not being able to do anything except hold the melody line. <laughs> and it was kind of true, I guess, because, um, yeah, I, I didn't have an instrument I could play in the orchestra. But one day... Out of the blue, our conductor asked what I was doing after school and that if I wasn't doing, any, doing anything, um, he asked if I wanted to join the percussion section um, as a percussionist. And uh, because uh, one of the percussionists had moved schools, so a space had come up and I got into the orchestra without an audition. 
I was really happy <laughs> that I got to be part of the orchestra, although a lot of the time I was counting like 150 bars of rests to finally play like the crash cymbal three times at the end of a 10 minute overture. <laughs> Um, but I was just so happy because it was undeniably God's grace that I was there. It was it was very clear to me I was not there because of how good I was. Um, uh, since moving to New Zealand, I was always part of a small church. I, I wasn't really a big church person. Um, yeah, the, I think the most youths we ever had was probably about 15. Um, and then in 2006, when I was, I think, 15 or 16, um, my dad was ordained as a pastor. And in 2008, he started a new church plant. So since then, it was basically just me and my sisters and um, just a few international students coming in and out. Uh, yeah, so I, I didn't really have many friends of faith I could walk with. And I think this was another small desire I had in my heart that God heard. Uh, there are, there are a few pivotal moments in my faith where I, um, where I could say my relationship with God was, uh, uh, got deeper. Um, so when I was 15, I went to my first youth conference, um, and this was when, this was the first time I met a large group of kids my age who also were worshipping the same God that I loved. And that was really overwhelming and really encouraging. Um, and um, after that conference, I um, that was when I started to talk to God every day. Um, like, you know, walking down the street, catching a bus or missing a bus. I'd be like, oh... God, I missed the bus. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so talking to God wasn't reserved to, you know, praying before a meal or going uh, going to bed anymore. Um, and at this conference, um, God gifted me a friend um, who, was, who was a few years older than me. Um, uh, yeah, so she was my first um, friend of faith who helped me sort of understand being a Christian was to be someone who was truly free in God. Uh, yeah, so that was, he, God gifted me my first friend of faith. My second pivotal season was um, at university, uh, where I went to a church that focused um, a lot on Bible study. I think, um, and it, it, I must say it, it was a bit intense, but in, in a good way. Um, I think it was also... Uh, a good thing because my university was um, very health science heavy so everyone was very studious and so I think knowing God so the, for, for the majority of students knowing God in a deep sort of studious way was um, quite a good way for the majority of students that went to our church um, but anyway uh, this this also was great for me um, it was like a basic foundational Bible study. Um, it just, you know, went through the simple basics of, you know, who God is and basically like what a follower of Christ believes and what the church is and all that sort of stuff. Um, but I felt like for the first time in my life, it gave me so much clarity and um, it, al it was almost like it articulated what my faith was. Um, so like all the sermons that I heard and all the devotionals I did for the last, uh, for the past 19 years all made sense to me in a, in a more organized way rather than like a, oh, that's a, that's a nice random thought or that's something, you know, nice. <laughs> um, and yeah, since, since then I'd actually, I've actually led that Bible study in New Zealand, um, seven times. Um, but, every, you know, kind of like the Alpha course, every time you do it, there are new bits that pop up and, yeah, it was, it was just really good. Um, and, yeah, it's just a nice reminder that going back to the basics and simplifying things once in a while is, is very helpful. Um, and also during my uni years, um, I that was the first time I, I encountered Christian apologetics um, because, yeah, I found myself, you know, um, at uni you find um, 
many friends of many faiths um, and I was frustrated at myself for not being able to um, enunciate what my beliefs were when I was in you know a heated debate with some of my atheist friends um, but yeah I think um, uh, apo the, yeah, apologetics gave me a better understanding of what I believed and um, it was it was important for me because it it from then on it didn't feel like uh, Christianity or believing in God wasn't just a default thing that I was born into but I actually understood it and it was like good reason um, in why God is real and etc um yeah and which it, it also led to me being more confident in my faith um yeah i would say this season was when i started to fully establish my own faith and deep understanding and relationship with god because until this point i didn't realize but i associated my faith um with what was actually my parents faith um yeah um yeah and also god wanted to continue gifting me with friends of faith during my time at uni as well um, i lived with two other girls from church for my second and third year and it was truly a great blessing we had a prayer evening um, every sunday night and we went through some tough hurdles um, together in prayer and we are still very close um, and we are each other's spiritual fellows who pray for each other and help each other um, in, uh, to keep in step with the spirit in, with the spirit um, the third pivotal season in my faith was when I came to the UK to St Saviour's but before I get into this I um, will give you a bit of background context um, in 2014, after graduating from university, I had a few difficult things come up um, all at once in my life. Um, the first big one was that um, I realised on my graduation day that I did not want an operatic career. Um, for those of you who didn't know, I majored in classical singing and I was quite serious about it for about 10 years. And I worked really hard. Um, I was doing lots of competitions. I was placing in lots of competitions, um, and um, it was it was a whole mixture of things. Though it was like I wanted to, you know, make my teacher proud, um, also my parents who supported me proud. Um, but yeah, anyway, it was it was all of that. Um, but it was quite hard to realize that I did all of this because I wanted it all to finish. And by yeah, at my graduation day, that was like, oh, I finally done it. And then that was when I realized I was working hard because I wanted it to finish. Um, the hardest thing after that was I, I, my heart had already left classical singing, but I continued lessons um, because I was given a place at the Wales International Academy of Voice to do a master's degree under the Welsh tenor Dennis O'Neill and um, this again I I didn't audition but I, I was given a place very fortunately again favour um, so it, that um, made me even more confused because it was like oh what if I'm just saying no to a gift um, anyway I continued singing lessons um, uh, with one of the best singing teachers in New Zealand and she generously gave me free lessons. Um, however, the power dynamic of that situation um, grew to be quite toxic because firstly I knew I didn't want to do it so e even though I was you know, doing the same amount of practice and I was turning up it just it just was not living up to my teacher's standards and also I felt quite guilty that I was getting free lessons from her but I wasn't giving her the right results that she was expecting of me um, and yeah and because of that I guess she started to uh, verbally abuse me um, and I was shouted at and sworn at for like every day for a few months there were lots of chairs and lots of um, flying books, 
lots of drama and um yeah there was it was a great loss of joy moreover there were some uh associate pastors at, at my dad's church who were um stirring up the small community that we had um long story short my dad had agreed to um, have a couple of pastors and their families to be part of our church although we were really small and we didn't really have the resources but because they needed to fill in their um, fill their five year five years to get their permanent residence in New Zealand um, and they couldn't find churches that would take them so my dad took them in and supported them what with whatever resources he could find and offer um, my dad is a person who he's he would always choose the the narrow good but narrow path um, so his methods can be seen as quite slow um, however yeah these pastors started to gossip about my dad's incompetence as a leader and um, he, they were talking behind his back and during this time um, the friend that I mentioned um, in the beginning that I met at my first Christian conference um, she was attending our church and um, yeah this all this gossip got to her and it strained our friend strained our friendship and so we parted our ways as friends so it was, uh, it was very difficult to lose one of my oldest spiritual friends in Christ and it really affected me because um, in my mind um, I kept imagine her, imagining her saying um, like whatever I was doing was wrong and so yeah that was, that was a very difficult time and it lasted for, for a couple of years as well. Um, on a side note though um, God actually allowed us to reconcile in a very amazing way like later down the track um, so we're friends again yay but I'll share that testimony another time. It's, it's a great story but um, I'll just keep to this story. <laughs> Um, also on top of all of that, um, I was grown wary of, um, leading worship at church. Um, yeah, so I, I started leading worship when my dad, um, started his church plant. So it must've been 16 or 17. Um, yeah. And in this time, um, yeah, the pastor who was in charge of mentoring the worship team, um, was um, quite adamant that our emotions should not get in the way of leading worship but it came to the point where I was in a place where I thought nothing that came of me was good for leading worship um, and I also found that I brought um, in my classical singing habits in leading worship where I like put it on for an audience um, put on a performance I guess and um, this yeah this was a very terrible season for me um, with my career and also relationships and my relationship with singing which was something that I've just done for most of my life um, but God classic God he um, showed his grace again yet another um, he sent yet another friend who um, I met in Australia who helped me reconnect with God and um, yeah stirred a passion in me to go deeper into God um, yeah so God was was always on my case and he was um, gifting me with um, these friends of faith along along the way also during this um, tough time I should give a shout out to my parents um, I think they they were going through all these difficult things with me but um, because their faith was so strong and their um, their hope in God was so strong that I think that was what um, really helped me um, get through it and also the fact that um, we were going through it as a family together I think that was yeah that was how we got through um, anyway fast forwarding to the end of 2015 um, I saw a job post on Facebook for a YouTube channel I had been um, yeah I had been a fan of this YouTube channel um, and thinking it was a long shot I decided to apply for this job uh, with some videos that I made on the side um, with some friends back at uni um, yeah so God um, it's amazing how God just uses these little things that you didn't think were imp uh, important but yeah those those little silly videos I made on the side um, God used and yeah
And surprise, I got the job because <laughs> I'm in the UK. <laughs> um, yeah, apparently I got the position um, almost 300 to 1. And I had no prior experience um, in or training in video editing. Um, but it's, yeah, classic God. God knows me so well. He knows that I can be a bit of a show if I, if I get a bit excited. So he's really good at making sure he gives me things in the most ridiculously unlikely ways. So there's absolutely no space for me to claim it as my own. And I have to admit that that was God and that was definitely not because of how good I am. Um, yeah, so getting this job was actually such a great and timely gift for me because um, it, for me, it, it felt like it was a sign um, that um, that I was still in God's favor. And also, um, it felt like God was saying to our family and especially my dad that what he was doing was good in God's eyes, um, con contrary to what um, these pastors were saying at the time. Anyway, so in February 2016, I came to the UK and um, I visited St. Saviour's for the first time. Um, it was one of the evening services, when we had the evening services, and I felt so welcome. Um, I almost felt as though everyone was expecting me. <laughs> um, and yeah, I, yeah, and I remember there were, uh, the worship the worship time there was no there were no fancy instruments not a lot of singers or anything it was just Leo Rob and Georgie but they were singing with a full spirit and I was able to worship again in a, in a complete in complete freedom in the spirit and in truth and it was just such a long time since that had happened and I remember saying to myself I think I will be able to grow here. Um, Chris, Rev Chris helped me a lot with my issues and trauma with singing because um, I kept it quite quiet that I sung at all for quite a long time um, but he was super patient with me thank you, shout out Rev Chris 7 um, yeah, uh, Chris really encouraged me and um, waited for me to make my own decision which was I think exactly what I needed um, and I think, uh, in 2017, it must have been, um, we went to David's tent. Um, so it was Chris's family, oh, Chris and Jenny, me, Emma, Sophie, um, yeah, and some other people from church. Um, David's tent is, a is a Christian festival weekend where, um, oh, there, there's, um, 72 hours of um, continuous worship it must have been the second morning worship session um, yeah I experienced a really big breakthrough with my relationship with singing um, I was just journaling and singing and praying away um, and all of a sudden I felt a really strong desire to sing really well and yeah, I wanted to just give God the best praise I could give because I felt like he was so worthy of the best praise. And it was so strange because I'd never felt this even when I was training in opera. It was a very, very strange feeling. I, I never had a strong desire to be the best singer ever. Um, and then I had the realization that every step I take and every practice I do to perfect a technique or you know to do anything that would make me sing the best I can for God that was an act of worship um, and and that realization um, gave me so much freedom so yeah since then like I didn't have to feel bad about not singing perfectly in front of a congregation or whether my emotions were getting in the way because I knew that God was going to take all of it as an act of worship um, yeah and now I'm singing better than I have ever before with a teacher 
um, and I feel like I found my own voice, which I didn't, I, I didn't really have, because um, for the most part of my training, I was told I had to sing a certain way. Um, and yeah, and most of all, I feel very comfortable using my own voice. Um, although recently I felt a bit rusty coming back to church to sing um, <laughs> because of lockdown. But yeah, practicing does not feel like a burden anymore. And I'm excited about worshipping in the, in the form of practicing now, which I never had before. Um, God continued to show me his grace through um, providing me with friends of faith again in the UK. Um, my housemates, uh, my last housemates now, um, Emma and Sophie, both whom I met at St. Saviour's, are amazing friends that I can pray and talk with. Um, yeah, I mean, that was only a, a small handful of examples of, uh, 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 of God's grace um, and favour in my life. Um, I wish I could share more, but anyway, um, yeah, preparing this testimony was an amazing reminder that God has not, um, and will not leave his children forsaken. Um, he wants to give us good gifts because he is our father. Um, and his grace comes from the fact that he cannot stop loving us. And so he just gives and gives, even though we don't deserve it. Um, yeah. And so during these tough times, I pray that we can hold on to the hope and be reassured that God will take care of us because, um, yeah, he sure has for me. Um, and, um, yeah, I know he will continue to do so in providing and showing his grace for everyone because we have the same father. Yay. Um, yeah, I'd just like to finish off with a scripture. Um, from 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 9 and 10 um, it is he said to me my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness therefore I will boast in all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me that is why for Christ's sake I delight in weaknesses in insults and hardships and precautions and difficulties for when I am weak then I am strong.